I try to live my life from the tenet of the law, the third law of motion in physics. If I had only one wise offering for you, it would be this one. The third law of motion, and all the laws of the universe actually, are in my mind divine laws. And my favorite is the third law, which says for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. There are lots of different religions and philosophies that call this other things. In this country, sometimes we call it the golden rule. What I know for sure is it doesn't matter what you do unto others, it's already done unto you. So anybody who's seen the movie The Color Purple, there's a line in there when Miss Seely leaves and she says to Mr. Everything you done to me, and she holds her two fingers, already done to you. That's the third law of motion. Newton didn't know that Seeley was going to articulate it that way, but. <laughs> so that is the tenet that rules my entire life. And before the third law of motion, which says there's every, every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Before there's even the thought or the action, there is the intention for the thought. And if there is one force field that rules and dominates the meaning of life for me, it is living my life with a, with a pure sense of intention. Now, this came to me because I used to be one of those people who had the disease to please. I said yes many times when I knew I should have been saying no, and then I would be mad at myself for saying yes. Anybody ever done that? You say yes. Then you're mad when they come back again. Because when you say yes, when you really mean no, people follow the intention of the yes. Because why do you say yes? You say yes because you don't want the person to be upset with you. They're not. You don't want the person to be angry. You want the person to think you're nice. They do. And that is why they keep coming back. I couldn't understand it. I just gave you some money. And now you are back. <laughs> oh, that's because I didn't really state the truth. And so now you think me giving you the money meant I wanted to give you the money and that's why you're back asking me for some more. So I tested this principle of intention when I first came to discover it in Gary Zukoff's book, Seed of the Soul. Uh, I was like, I'm gonna see if that intention thing will work for this disease to please because people are always bothering me. So this is what I learned through intention. Nothing is showing up in your life that you didn't order there. If it's there, it's there because you needed to see it. I have a big life and things show up for me in big ways. So one day Stevie Wonder calls me. I'm not name dropping, it's true, he'd call me. <laughs> no brag, just fact. It was Stevie. And he didn't call to say he loved me either. He was calling. He was calling because he wanted something, but that's okay. Um, and I, at the time, this was early on, you know, because when I first started making money and it was, you know, my salary or my earnings were published all over the place. I mean, the first year I was like, really? Did I make that much money? Oh my God. Um, it was very difficult for me to figure out where my boundaries were because I'd grown up poor and didn't have anything. So it's easy when you don't have anything and people ask you for money. They say, I need 500. You say, I don't have it because I'm just trying to get my rent paid. It's harder when your multi-billion dollar salary is now in the paper and you get a lot of friends and cousins you didn't have before. So how do you set boundaries for yourself. I was having trouble setting boundaries myself for myself for even strangers. People would just show up at my door in Chicago and say, oh, bro, I left my husband. Please help me. And I would because she knows I have it. So don't try that now, though, okay? <laughs> don't try that now. I figured it out. 
So when Stevie called me this time, I thought I'd try out my first no on Stevie. Let's start big. He wanted me to donate some money to a charity, and I didn't want to donate to the charity because I have my own charities, and I care about a lot of people, but the, the, the problem is when you, you have money, everybody thinks you just want to give to everything. So every letter I ever get starts with, we know you love the children. <laughs> yes, I do love the children, but somebody else is going to have to help the children. So I said to Stevie, uh, I said to Stevie, no. And um, as a person who has that disease to please, I was waiting for him then to, to say, I will never speak to you again. I will never call you. I will never sing a song for you. And he didn't. He just said, okay. Okay? Okay, it's okay? He said, okay, check you later. What I learned from that is, many times you will have angst and worry about things and put yourself in a state when the other person really isn't even thinking about you. So learning that I could specifically determine for myself what the boundaries were for me, what I wanted to do, give my money, give my time, give of my service to who I wanted to give it to when I did, that I get to make that decision. And just because you get 100 requests a week doesn't mean you have to try to fulfill all of that. Just because you have all of these demands on your time and on you doesn't mean that you have to say yes. You get to decide because you're the master of your fate. The captain of your soul, as William Ernest Henley said in Invictus. And understanding that really changed the meaning of my life in that I was not no longer driven by what other people wanted me to do, but took charge of my own destiny, making choices based upon what do I feel is the next right move for me.